Yo, the cryptocurrency industry is one of the fastest growing industries under the sun. And this means two things. Number one, it means that we have a crazy opportunity to generate life-changing wealth. However, on the flip side, it means that we are putting everything at risk. Why? Because it's an extremely volatile industry, right? And a lot of uncertainties. So you have an opportunity, but you also have increased risk. In today's video, I want to talk about this because right now I think with this macroeconomic market sentiment, nobody really wants to talk about crypto. Nobody's really interested right now. And if you talk about investing into cryptocurrencies right now or even generating cash flow with it in DeFi, it's a red flag right now. Nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to talk about this. Um, everybody believes that we will have another crazy uh, bear market ahead of us. Um, it might come, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I think nobody really knows. And if you're excited about this content, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, number one. Number two, like this video, share with one or two friends. Number three, also make sure to watch this entire thing. Now, the first question, what to buy, is probably the biggest question everybody has. Even I ask that myself sometimes. And to answer that question, I think it is extremely important to have a certain research methodology to get some sense of a certain project, who is behind it, to analyze the people, analyze the potential, analyze the product market fit, maybe use the product if they already have a product and really get behind the big idea and really also be personally aligned with it, right? What I see a lot of people are just doing, they ask me like, hey, should I buy this coin? Should I buy that coin? Like, I'm not a financial advisor, guys. I, I can't give you that advice. I mean, and even if I could, I think in the cryptocurrency industry, which is my tagline on Twitter, every coin can always go to zero. They can just go to zero. We've seen it with Luna. Luna was one of the most hyped cryptocurrencies. The fundamentals were super strong. It was innovative. It was amazing. It had product market fit. But um, if you really, really dig deeper into it, um, you could tell that it, it was not the sustainable model that they claimed they had, right? It collapsed and went to zero literally overnight. So what you really have to analyze is um, based on your personal methodology, what is important to you? Where do you see this headed, right? You obviously need to do research. You need to have background knowledge. Investing in cryptocurrencies should not be based on blind recommendations from a YouTuber, right? Even if you're watching my videos and you see me talking about a certain cryptocurrency, which sometimes happens if you're a crypto YouTuber, um, even if I mention coins, uh, or if you track, for example, my portfolio challenge, my 10,000 US dollars portfolio challenge, I never tell you to buy these coins. I think, and you should also never just buy them because I buy them, right? But that's the whole point. And you really need to have your own research methodology, um, take full accountability, responsibility of what you do. Don't blame others. If you blame others in the end, it means that you have never done your research and you're the one to blame. So really do your research, strong fundamentals and innovative products that have strong product market fit, in my opinion, are the way to go. Um, which means you should be reading a lot of white papers. You should be really uh, listening to a lot of podcasts. There's great, great podcasts out there um, from different ecosystems. You should also not be just blind on one ecosystem. You should also be open for others um, because I think there's a lot of innovation and a lot of different ecosystems going on. And then also when it comes what to, uh, down what to buy, I think it's very important to set up a portfolio where the majority, let's say 70, 80% consists of blue chip cryptocurrencies, right? Which means they have a relatively stable, high market cap. They have an active user base. They have an active community. They have a well-funded team. They're established. They're not going to get shaken out by a drop in the markets um, and really, really bet on those infrastructure projects, right? And it can be as simple as Bitcoin or Ethereum, right? Like the two biggest ones, why not? Those two are actually like the ones that have the most um, the most robustness in crypto, right? So um, yeah, I mean, it really depends on your risk tolerance, also obviously on your personal situation, right? If you have family to take care of, I think you should not even touch any sort of like micro cap cryptocurrency, um, maybe just, you know, to gamble on. But um, yeah, set up a strong portfolio of 80% minimum blue chips, I would say, 
and then um, really, really buy coins that you are most familiar with, right? Don't in ape into high yields. Don't ape into micro caps. Don't ape into whatever a YouTuber, a cryptocurrency influencer, whatever tells you like, oh, this is now the next 100x guaranteed. And it's, I mean, it sounds stupid, but it's still happening out there, right? People still calling 100x's, guaranteed 100x's. And this is always a red flag. So that's the first topic, what to buy. Now, second topic, when to buy. Probably uh, the same, you know, the same difficulty um, uh, in answering this question as the first one. In general, I would say buy a cryptocurrency as far away from the all-time high as possible, right? And um, that's why, for example, on my ten thousand US dollar portfolio challenge, I am cost averaging in, and I buy more coins when the price drops because that's how you average down your entry point, right? I bought my first Juno in this portfolio challenge at thirty-four US dollars, and through cost averaging, I brought it down to I think nine dollars or eight dollars something. Um, so that is really the key is to cost average down and also buy as far away from the all-time high as possible. And that's why I also want to make this video today, because right now you do see a lot of coins that are 70, 80, 90% down from their all-time highs. And I think that is really the time where you should be interested into uh, buying cryptocurrencies, right? Doesn't mean that you should go all in right now, but it means that you should be interested to buy now more than you were interested six months ago because now you get all these coins that might most likely have stronger fundamentals because they have more integrations they may, might may, maybe have hired one or two more developers they have more lines of code they have a better infrastructure they have you know they just advanced over the past six months but the uh the price dropped so you get a discount for a better product i mean that's really how you need to see it and um, of course it really really depends and that's the big thing um, if you did your research, right? If you did your research and if you are fundamentally convinced of that coin. But yeah, so in general, um, cost average in, buy as far away from the all-time high as possible. Buy low, sell high means buy red, sell green, right? And I think now we're seeing a lot of red. Obviously the last week or two has been uh, a little bit of green, but I think that might also just be a either dead cat bounce or relief rally, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if the uh, bottom was already in. I can't really tell it to you. Um, personally, I, I'm more inclined to believe that the bottom was in and Bitcoin at 17 point something K was the bottom. But who am I to to notice? I mean, I don't know. There's um, a lot more higher powers, you know, uh, with more money, with more influence that um, is is shaping the, the cryptocurrencies market right now. But I think um, now is still you're buying a lot of these coins at a big discount. Now, third topic I want to uh, cover and then we wrap this video up is to generate cash flow, right? When I got into crypto, there was no way to generate cash flow in crypto unless you bought a physical hardware miner, right? Which um, or, or you did cloud mining, which always ended up to be a Ponzi scheme. And the thing is really now through DeFi, through decentralized exchanges, AMMs like uh, like Uniswap or like on, you know, Cosmos ecosystem, which we're, which is where I am mostly active in, um, Osmosis, you can really generate yield, generate real yield. Obviously it comes with risks and we can, I will talk about this in a second. Also the ratios of what I'm personally um, investing in to generate cash flow, but it's really about now you have this chance to generate cash flow, which you did not have three, four, five years ago. Now you have it. And I think this is also an additional thing that can cost average down your entry levels. That's at least how I see it. And yeah, which basically combats the volatility to the downside a little bit, right? So you have coins, for example, um, you know, like even Atom or Osmo that have 20 or 29% APR. And if you compound it, you get even more. But then you have Juno that has 80% APR or Stargaze, right? Or XPRT has 36 or 35, something like that. And then you have something crazy like FMOS, which has 400% APR. Um, and obviously, with those high APRs in the beginning, especially when these coins are new, like FMOS, when it came out, um, the APRs are so high that if you are in it from the beginning, um, you maximize your your returns in, in uh, cash flow, right? So um, I think that's one of the big things that I'm personally doing is I try to diversify my portfolio in a way that it generates cash flow for me. 
Um, of course, I understand that uh, some people might just speculate on the price. They don't want to put them into staking or into pools because you have unbonding periods, which means you can't sell right away. Um, but I would say I only have a very tiny uh, amount of coins um, in percentage that is liquid in my portfolio. Most of it is working for me. And I think that also makes me sleep much better because I'm not just speculating on the price. I'm earning yield. I'm generating cash flow. And um, mostly uh, what I do, that's also what I want to get to because a lot of people are still in the DeFi jungle, getting lost a little bit and then they're chasing those high uh, LP yields, for example, or lending and yield farming. And then they uh, end up looping this and gaming this whole system. I think you don't even need to take those risks. First of all, you have more code risk. Um, you, you have the danger that these protocols get exploited, which is happening all the time. Um, I think what I'm personally doing at least is I have 70 or 80% of my money, of my coins, that is just staked. I just stake and compound and stake and compound and stake and compound. Not only does it generate relatively safe yield in that in that sense, at least in coin terms, but also it makes you eligible for airdrops, right? And uh, last year obviously has been a crazy year for airdrops in Cosmos um, or earlier this year even. And I think there's still a lot to come, right? Uh, no land is still coming up. Um, that will be a big airdrop. I think um, you have um, potentially Saga that's going to do an airdrop. Um, yeah, there's a lot of projects coming, Quicksilver also. So there's still a lot that's coming. And um, I'm just staking and compounding most of my coins. Now, of, also, of course, with 20% uh, of my money, I'm also into liquidity pools, right? Um, which, however, means that I have an additional risk. Number one, code risk, as I mentioned. Number two, impermanent loss, which a lot of people underestimate, especially in a bear market. You just lose so much money with impermanent loss and liquidity pools, which is why a lot of people have withdrawn their money from liquidity pools over the past few months. But um, yeah, it just is what it is. I want to leave you guys with that. Just some thoughts on whether investing in cryptocurrencies makes sense. I think it always makes sense, even more so when things are down, right? When everybody's fearful, when everybody's scared. Well, that doesn't mean that we don't have another, you know, difficult one year or two years ahead of us. This can also be the case. I mean, I thought uh, in 2018 that, you know, after this nasty, nasty crash, like, okay, we bought them now, we're going to recover. And then um, in 2019, we had another crash. And then in 2020, with the COVID crash, that was the real bottom. And when, when Ethereum dropped to $86 um, and everything just went in a free fall, 40%, 30, 40% in one day, this can always happen. So be careful, be mindful, don't go all in. Don't use leverage. Don't use margin trading platforms. Don't mortgage your house in spite of what Michael Saylor is telling you or any other of the big influencers that are telling you to use their referral links to sign up for some margin trading platform. Don't do any of that. Just stick to the, to the principles, to your principles that you set for yourself. Do your research to summarize it. Do your research on strong fundamentals. Build a portfolio with strong blue chips. 80% and then 20% you can gamble whatever you want, um, but at least you would not get entirely wrecked. Diversify, but don't over diversify, don't overdo it and look for positions that generate cash flow for you. That's at least my advice that I can give you. Um, but obviously none of this is any uh, direct financial advice for you. You have to always take full accountability and responsibility of your finances. I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and be good.